In this video, we look at constructing a confidence interval for two proportions. So we are interested in the proportion of voters who respond very well to the poll question below. The poll question is, how well do you think the current candidates in the Democratic presidential primary reflect the Democratic Party? Uh, we've broken the voters up between men voters and women voters, and we see the counts of the men voters and women voters who responded very well or somewhat well and the count of men voters and women voters who respond not very well or not well at all. A confidence interval relies on the distribution being approximately normal. Explain how you have already verified that a normal approximation is reasonable for this data. So we looked at this data in previous examples, and so from the table, the count in each group is more than 10. We know the successes and failures for men voters and women voters is more than 10, the conditions are met to use a normal model. So you could go through the calculations of uh, sample size one times sample proportion one uh, and so on, but we can do an eyeball check in the table just to make sure there's more than 10 responses in each uh, cell of the table and we know we have enough data and our conditions are met to use a normal model. We wanna first construct and interpret a 68% confidence interval, predicting the true difference in proportions between the proportion of men Democratic voters who respond very well, that the current primary candidates reflect the Democratic Party, and women Democratic voters who respond very well, that the current primary candidates reflect the Democratic Party. So we're going to go into StatCrunch and do this. The standard error formula for two proportions is uh, pretty complicated with the two different proportion calculations in addition. So we are going to outsource that to technology. It's too easy to make a mistake trying to do that calculation by hand. And you have shown me and previous math teachers that you can do the division and addition and square rooting calculations. So it's OK to outsource that to technology. So we're going to head into StatCrunch and go to Stat, Proportion, Stats, Two Samples with Summary. And then we're going to choose the Confidence Interval button. Since I have the summary information, I'm just going to open a blank stat crunch. If I was working from a data set, I would pull that up. And then we go to stat, proportion stats, two sample with summary. And sample one is the men voters. So that's uh, 192 out of 240 who responded very well to the survey or somewhat well. And sample two is the women voters, and they are 198 out of 260 who responded very well to the survey. It does not matter which group is sample one and sample two. You just want to make sure you have a note of who's in which group. And then we're not going to do a hypothesis test. We're going to come down here and do a confidence interval, and we're going to start out at a 68% confidence interval. So we're going to change our level to 0.68 and go ahead and hit compute. So we see here's our sample difference from previous examples. We know that. Here's our standard error. It's the same from the previous examples. And here is the lower limit and the upper limit. So StatCrunch has done the confidence interval math for us by taking the standard error and multiplying it by, uh, in this case, 1, because we are 68% confident, and then adding and subtracting that from the sample difference. So we are going to record our lower limit and upper limit. So I've recorded those here and highlighted them to be easy for us to see. So our lower limit is 0 0.0017, and our upper limit is 0 0.0752, so between less than 1% and about 7 to 8%. So when we read our sentence, it's going to be a little bit long because we're explaining this difference between the voters and their responses. You might find ways to use different words to explain the same um, explanation of the voters. So that's fine if your sentence is a little more efficient than mine. So I said with 68% confidence in our calculations, we predict the true population difference in proportions between the proportion of men Democratic voters who respond very well that the current primary candidates reflect the Democratic Party and women Democratic voters who respond very well that the current primary candidates reflect the Democratic Party is between 0 0.0017 and 0 0.0752 more proportion of men voters. 
So because our difference was positive and because group one was the proportion of men voters, then we see a positive difference is indicating that there is more proportion of men voters who are responding very well to this question. So based on the 68% confidence interval, is zero difference a reasonable conclusion? Well, let's look back at our 68% confidence interval. Zero is not between the lower limit and the upper limit. These are all positive values. So since zero is not in the 68% confidence interval, it is not reasonable to conclude that no difference uh, in men and women voters at the 68% level. So our 68% confidence intervals is indicating that men are saying very well uh, that the voters fit the party in their responses to the questions. So now we're going to construct a 95% confidence interval. So technology uh, will do this very quickly for us. So we're just going to go into stat crunch and we can edit our existing confidence interval and change our percent and see how that changes. So I'm going to go back into stat crunch. I've already got my calculation up from the 68% interval. So I'm going to go to options edit and just change my confidence level to 0.95 for 95% confidence. You could also uh, go again to stat proportion stats to sample so summary and enter the data again and do a 95% confidence interval from start to finish. But since we already had some data entered, we can go to options edit. And if we hit compute, these are our new limits. Notice the sample difference has not changed. The standard error has not changed. But the lower limit is now lower and it's gone into the negative. And the upper limit is now higher because we are more confident, so our interval is wider. So I recorded the lower limit and upper limit. I like to round to four decimal places. Um, as long as you're somewhere between three and seven decimal places, I'm happy. And then we want to give a summary sentence. So I tried to be a little more efficient here in my explanation and still convey the same voting difference. So I said with 95% confidence in our calculations, we predict the true population difference in proportions between the proportion of men voters and women voters who respond very well that the current primary candidates reflect the Democratic Party is 0 0.0340 more women voters to 0 0.1109 more men voters. So why did I say 0 0.0340 more women voters? Well, our lower limit is negative 0 0.0340. So a negative difference when we're subtracting proportions means the second group was higher. So that would indicate 3% or 0.034 proportion more women voters are responding very well. All the way up to the upper limit, which is positive 0.11. So that would be about 11% more men voters responding very well. So this is a wider interval because now we're 95% confident. So we've upped our confidence and widened our interval. Question E says, based on the 95% confidence interval, is zero difference a reasonable conclusion? Since zero is in the 95% confidence interval, it is reasonable to conclude that there's no difference in men voters and women voters at the 95% confidence level. That zero is between our lower limit and our upper limit, so that's a valid possibility at this confidence level. So part F asks us, what accounts for the difference in the answers to questions C and E? To increase the confidence level from 68% to 95%, we must have a wider range of possible values. So when we are more confident in our calculations, there is a wider range for the true difference in proportions estimate. If we went up to 99% confidence, we would have an even wider interval. So as we increase confidence, we have to increase more possibilities because uh, we want to be more sure that we've caught the true proportion in our range. So typically, as researchers, we choose somewhere between 90 to 99 percent, depending on how uh, sure we want to be.